WFSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning and thank you for joining us on this Friday morning. I'm Roger Suzanne and listen, we've got a lot to cover, but first we need to check in with meteorologist Scott Haney because it's an early morning weather alert day. So Scott, how's it looking out there? Pretty rough in the afternoon, right? Yeah, later this afternoon, Roger, anytime after 6 p.m. through about midnight tonight, that's the time frame of interest. Although there could be a pop-up shower or thunderstorm prior to that, just keep your eyes to the skies and if they look threatening, please head indoors. Our Doppler scans the state dry right now. Visibility, New Haven, you're reduced to 8 miles. Might be a little bit of fog down there, but everybody else is doing just fine. We have partly to mostly cloudy skies. We had some scattered showers in parts of northeast and southeast Connecticut a little bit earlier this morning. Main action goes to the north of us this morning, though. This is the, the energy back here that we're talking about. This is all in association with a cold front that's going to be barreling into the region. So we have gone ahead and issued an early warning weather alert for isolated strong to severe storms, wind gusts, lightning, hail, torrential rain, flooding is all on the table again this evening through tonight. So keep attention to Channel 3 and also download that app. It is a great resource. The severe threat, this is out of the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma, has placed a portion of Connecticut at level one. Not horrendous, but uh, nothing in northeast and southeast Connecticut. There will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Let's hope they don't get to severe levels there. But you notice northwest Connecticut clipped with the yellow. That is level two. Never good. And the further north and west you go during the day today and tonight, the more likely you are to run into some troublesome weather. Excessive rain outlook. We're at level one as well. We don't need any more rain. We're coming in now. Uh, the wettest July on record. Who needs more rain? Not us, but unfortunately it is in the forecast. Again, maybe an isolated shower or thunderstorm around 3 p.m. in parts of the state, but the main action comes after 6 p.m. for inland Connecticut. Maybe a little bit later for the shoreline, 7, 8 o'clock tonight for the shoreline. We'll be under partly to mostly cloudy skies through the day. Speaking of partly to mostly cloudy skies, here's Old Saybrook. Good morning. The camera that never disappoints is certainly not this morning. Mostly overcast conditions in Torrington. A little bit of sun making its way through New Haven. And check out that temperature. 74 degrees. 63 is the typical overnight low. We're at 74 this morning. 73 in New London. People getting ready to get on the Cross Sound Ferry for another busy day. Maybe they're headed to Block Island for the weekend. All right, here's Futurecast tomorrow's weather today. 7 p.m. tonight. We start to see the action. This is 8 o'clock tonight. This is 9 o'clock tonight. 10 o'clock tonight. Night. Even at 1 a.m., there could be a scattered shower or thunderstorm in parts of southeast Connecticut. But tomorrow turns out to be a beautiful day of weather with partly to mostly sunny skies. Again, this storm system is all in association with this cold front. This is going to be barreling into a moist and humid air mass. The winds will be out of the south today, pumping up that humidity, pumping up the temperatures into the low 80s. And then the showers and thunderstorms develop again anytime after 6 p.m. Temperatures out there right now, 69 for Bradley, 70 for Brainerd, 74 for New Haven. Not a bad start, right? You certainly don't need the jacket or sweatshirt that you needed earlier this week with those temperatures that were in the mid to upper 40s. This morning at 74 in New Haven. We're up anywhere from 7 to 11 to 13 degrees better than where we were 20 four hours ago and the winds little sustained breeze along the shoreline 7 to 12 miles an hour so hang on to your hats dew points everybody's back in the 60s which is unfortunate it's back into the muggies but uh, you will notice the dew point trend comes down for the upcoming weekend saturday sunday look delightful even a portion of monday but monday night into tuesday morning we start to deal with scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, all over again daytime highs today climbing to the low 80s your seven day forecast includes a nice weekend 84 and 85 now, between the hours of 6 and midnight, I'm reiterating the fact that we could have some strong to severe storms in the state this evening through tonight. Saturday, Sunday look amazing. Monday evening through uh, early Tuesday morning, more scattered showers and thunderstorms. And then Wednesday and Thursday look good. Temperatures close to normal, partly to mostly sunny skies and low humidity. That's a check of your early morning forecast. Roger, we'll send it back to you. Okay, thanks, Scott. And breaking overnight, we are learning some new information about a shooting investigation in Norwich. Last night, police found a man who had been shot in the leg right at the intersection of Rockwell Street and Judd Road. Now, that victim was rushed to the hospital, and fortunately, he is expected to be okay. Investigators, though, are still searching for that shooter. And we're also tracking developing news in Woodbridge this morning, where a police investigation is on full swing right now. In full swing, I should say, detective scene with flashlights searching the perimeter of a home near Raymond Street. We have reached out to both Connecticut State Police as well as Woodbridge Police for information on exactly what happened. And as soon as we get any new information, we will pass it along to you on air and on the Channel 3 app.
And another top story today as state leaders react to a state audit criticizing the Connecticut Port Authority. This is all because the state pier project in New London continues to go way over budget. The auditors claim that the Port Authority allowed a company to bid on contract it was supposed to oversee. Now this means that basically no one held the contractors accountable for staying on budget. And a political consultant has been sentenced to eight months in prison for conspiring to defraud a probate judge candidate back in 2017. 59 year old Victor Cuevas and his business team were paid to collect voter signatures, but instead, police say they faked those signatures on petition forms. Now, when the Democratic Registrar of Voters saw those signatures were not real, the candidate withdrew from the primary. And a Hartford woman facing charges after being accused of stealing tens of thousands of dollars from the state's Care for Kids program. Investigators say Aki de la Cruz, who operates a home daycare center, faked signatures from parents in order to steal more than $127,000 from that program. De la Cruz is now facing larceny charges. She has been released on a $60,000 bond. And officials are still trying to figure out who led a cyber attack on two big Connecticut health care systems. The computer systems at Waterbury Hospital and Eastern Connecticut Health Network had went offline yesterday, forcing workers to scramble to divert patients to other facilities. There's no word yet on if any patient data was compromised because of that situation. And this morning, police have doubled the reward they're offering for leads in a cold case murder investigation in Colchester. James Stone Jr. was shot and killed five years ago inside of his trailer on Stanovich Road. State police have now raised that reward to $50,000 for any information leading them to an arrest. Contact CSP if you can help them out. And a new report by the National Low Income Housing Coalition says you'd need to make nearly $32 an hour to be able to afford a modest two bedroom apartment. That's actually the ninth highest housing wage in the entire country. For a one bedroom apartment, listen to this, someone making the state a minimum wage of $15 an hour would need to work 69 hours a week just to afford their rent. And thank you so much for tuning into Channel 3 Eyewitness News. We so appreciate it. Remember, you can get news updates and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a fantastic Friday, everybody.